Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's episode, well, we are going to be allowed to move our buildings to different locations. We're going to be able to do that only with the finished ones. So let's say a player ba builds a base and they're like, oh no, this buildable actually should have been in a different location. So we can go ahead, hold the Q key down and we can move it over to this location. And we can obviously move it to any location. We don't have to necessarily lock it to those buildables. We can do it in, in anywhere else. So we can build this on the ground. We can go ahead and grab this wall and go ahead and snap it to this place, for example. So let's let's get started. For this episode, we're going to do a tiny little adjustment. So as you remember in previous videos uh, or the previous one, uh, on the keyboard key one, we have this progress bar value that adds up. And uh, well, we will need this same exact code once more, at least once more, maybe possibly even a lot of times. So what we are going to do is optimize this a little bit and make this into an event. So go ahead, copy these nodes right here. So the branch check with its condition, uh, the progress bar adding value and the setting node. So basically these ones right here. So go ahead, copy those. And let's create ourselves a new custom event from this. And let's call this progress add, like so. Plug that in and we are good to go. So now we can use this one instead of this whole chunk. So go ahead, grab these nodes again and bring those down a little bit. And instead of them, what we are going to do is we're going to run our progress add event, like so. Then after this event, we're just gonna skip all of this, go directly to the branch check. Now make sure you reconnect this loop right here so it goes back to this node and then we can delete all of these nodes because we already have those as you can see over here. So we're going to use this custom event instead. Now the difference is that now for the condition we need to bring in our progress value and plug it in in the top. There we go so that we can check the values. So now we can move this in and as you can see this has been cleaned quite a bit. So now as you can see we have way less nodes it has been cleaned up quite nicely so now we're going to be able to reuse our progress add and make things a little bit better so there we go that's good now i'm going to be using my keyboard q key to move the finished builds around but before that let's go ahead let's open up our build component and let's add a couple of variables to it so we're going to need two things in this one we're going to need a movable actor reference so that we know which buildable we are moving around so make sure you make that into an actor type so it can accept any buildables and another vari variable will be is moving and this is going to a boolean value and this is going to tell us whether we are currently trying to move a build so now that we have these two values we can go back to our third person character so i'm going to be using the keyboard key q for this one and what i'm going to do is actually from the keyboard key one, I'm gonna copy these nodes right here. So the beginning part, the trace, does implement interface, branch, is build finished, and another branch. So I'm gonna copy these. Later, we're gonna optimize this a little bit more uh, and we're gonna have less nodes in here. But for now, let's just copy these. Let's copy these over here. And so over here on the Q key, uh, we first do a sequence and then we have a branch check. Now from the false route, if the build mode is not on, if we if we do not rotate the object, then instead we are going to try to move it. So we're going to do a line trace. We're going to check whether that thing that we have hit that's in front of us is a buildable. And then we're going to check if it is finished, like so. Now, if it is finished, then we can proceed with moving it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the is progress to be true so that we start to have our progress bar and that we can move our buildable around. And the next thing that we need is I'm going to copy the progress add loop. So this one right here. So we're going to grab progress add. We're going to check the value and do a delay, just like we did on keyboard key one. So we're going to plug that in and it's going to look something like this. Here we go. So now we're going to have a progress bar for moving as well. So that accidentally, we don't accidentally just click it, but we have to wait for it a little bit and then it confirms and then we can move the object around. Here we go. So that's good. Now, the next thing that we need to do is from the false route, what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab our build component. And from this, we're going to set a couple of variables. So the first one we need to set is moving Boolean value. So from false, false route, we're going to set that and that's going to be set to true. 
then the next thing that we need to set is we need to set our movable movable actor there we go we have this now for its value what we are going to grab is we're going to grab the hit actor from the trace so this guy right here so go ahead and plug that in as well there we go so now that one has been connected so we're good to go on that one and let's set up a couple of more so at this point right here that means that we have waited for those two seconds we have already accepted that we are moving something and we have stored the variable in the memory so that means that at this point we can go ahead and disable our progress bar so let's go ahead let's set our in progress to false and the progress value to zero just like we did previously over here so basically we are removing those from our screens so now at this point we will start running our moving uh, we're going to set up the ids and all of that stuff but before we do that we need to make some more some we need to add a function and do some adjustments inside of our build interface so the first thing that we need to do is we need to know which index we are using uh which buildable we are moving uh, well from the database it's buildable so that we know which preview we should display because obviously the original buildable is going to stay in place and then we're going to move it uh, using a different preview so uh, let's go ahead let's create ourselves a new function and let's call this return build id now this thing will need a single input and this is going to be the build id uh, well output in this case and let's make that into an integer so now this is going to help us return the index of our buildable now at this point, none of our buildables actually know their indexes, so we need to go ahead and set those. Now, one interface function that is common with all of these is the set build cost, which will tell how much the buildable, uh, how, how many resources the buildable needs to finish it. So, with this, since this is ran on all of them, we're going to add a new parameter for this and we're going to pass along the build ID integer value. So, this is going to now store the indexes, the build IDs in the buildables. So at this point, what we can do is go ahead, open up all of our buildables. Like I mentioned previously, technically we could have made a master, uh, but that will, with making the master, that will make things a little bit more complex when you're trying to add things from different systems to this one. Uh, so I, I opted not to use the build master for this one. If you have, then go ahead and use the master, but I'm going to have to do this task in all, every single one of my buildables. So we have the event set cost. And from here now we have a new input which we can then promote to a variable and this is going to be our build id once we have done that we can go ahead and open up our return build id and return this value through this interface function like so and now we need to do exactly the same thing everywhere else in every other one of our buildables we need to promote the build id and we need to return the build id through the interface function so let's go ahead let's do this a couple of times i know this is very very repetitive and i know a lot of you might be thinking oh you should have used uh the 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 masters for this like i said yeah technically yeah but at the same time it's going to make things quite a bit more complex when adding things from different systems so this way you have more freedom uh, it's a little bit more work kind of but at the same time not really um so yeah let's go ahead and let's set these guys up and we have one more over here and this is another reason why i mentioned at the beginning that it's better to just simply follow the tutorial finish it and then make the adjustments then add more buildables don't add more buildables straight away understand how this works and then start manipulating with it there we go so we have all of this stuff set up now, the next thing that we can do is we can go to our build component and go ahead and set up ourselves a new function. And let's call this move buildable. Now, over here, what we are going to do is we're going to run our interface that we called return build ID so that we know which index this build originally had. And the target for this is going to be our movable actor. So the actor that we are going to move and then from here we can go ahead and set our build id so that it would grab the mesh that is necessary to preview and all that stuff and then after that we can just simply go ahead and launch our build mode like so there we go 
Now, the next thing is back in our third person character. So we finished off with this one. We said that the object is moving and we set the movable actor, disabled the progress bar. And now at this point, what we can do is go ahead and from the build component, we can run our, from the build component and run our move, move buildable, like so. There we go. So now at this point, we should be able to kind of move things around. Well, not really, but so this is what it, what it should look like. So if we have two different buildables, we finish those. We're not able to run it through this one, but we are able to run it through a finished one. But it's always going to have this one, the foundation, because it's the index zero. And as you can see, we can then continue building new things and it's not actually moving the previous ones. So uh, the reasons for that is we need to do some adjustments in the build component. So the first thing is whenever we actually spawn the build. So go ahead, open your spawn build function. It has no build ID. Well, it has, but it's zero. So it's always going to have the first index in the memory. So go ahead, grab your build ID and plug that in. So now at this point, whenever you are moving a different object, you will see that it is now spawning that specific preview. But again, it's not moving. It's just allowing us to make new ones. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make some adjustments on the mouse right click. So on the mouse right click, we check if the build mode is on, if we're allowed to build, and then it spawns the build for us. Now over here, we need to do some adjustments because always on the right click, it's going to spawn it. We don't necessarily always want to spawn it. Sometimes we just want to move things. So we're going to do an if branch check on this one. And we're going to check if is moving. Now, if we are not moving, if it's false, then we can proceed with the code that we had previously. We can spawn ourselves a new buildable. But if we are moving, then we need to grab our movable actor. And from here, we need to set actor location. Or actually, let's set actor transform. That's going to be a little bit easier because then that way it's going to grab the rotation as well and all of that stuff. So we have the actor set actor transform and then for that we can use our build transform like so because our build cycle is going to take care of the locations and all that stuff and it's going to run those just fine. Now after this we need to go ahead and stop our build mode. So go ahead and stop the build mode like so and also inside of our stop build mode now we will need to reset some of the variables back to their default values. And those variables will be our movable actor. So we're going to set that to none. And also the is moving needs to be set back to false because we are no longer moving anything. So now if we try this again, let's create some buildables. Let's create a couple of those. There we go. So we have these. And now if we hold Q, we have our door. We can place it over here and it's going to get moved. There we go. So now if the player has built their base somewhere or some kind of a wall in a wrong position, maybe later on the base layout starts to change, something is a little off, well, then they can go ahead and move these things around. This one didn't move for some reason. Huh, this is very interesting. So all the other ones did move except for this one. So if we try this one again, that one that gets moved. But this one, for some reason, does not want to move. And that is because, well, as soon as we hit escape, we have an error that the actor is not movable, of course. So the walls, windows and doors are movable. They're changing meshes. So we set those to be movable. So go ahead and go through all of your buildables select your base component and make sure it is set to movable. Now this issue, if you follow the, the series uh, completely, then it's going to have only two places. So one of them is going to be the floor. That's going to be need to be set to movable. And the other one is going to be the foundation. And that one is also going to be need set to movable. All the other ones should be already movable by this point. There we go. So now this is going to work just fine with this one as well. So yeah, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, subscribe and see you in the next one.